A Beginner's Guide to Shock. Types, Causes and Treatment. All living cells in the human body require oxygen to convert glucose into energy efficiently. Every cell in the body needs a constant supply of oxygen, water, and glucose to participate in aerobic metabolism. The waste products of aerobic metabolism are carbon dioxide, water, and heat. Lactic acid is a product of anaerobic metabolism. Perfusion is the delivery of oxygen and nutrients, essentially glucose and water, and the removal of waste products. In aerobic metabolism, we are concerned about removing carbon dioxide, a little bit of heat, and a little bit of water. For cells to receive oxygen, there needs to be adequate blood flow throughout the body so that cellular respiration can occur. When there is an impedance in the body's ability to perfuse blood to the tissues, shock may occur. Hypoperfusion is the medical name for shock and means low perfusion. Any breakdown in the perfusion equation can result in shock. Shock is always a life-threatening condition. Shock is a fatal condition caused by circulatory failure throughout the entire body. It results in cellular damage and can lead to multiple organ failures if not treated immediately. This video will break down the four types of shock, their causes, and treatment protocols. 1. Hypovolemic shock. Hypovolemic shock occurs when the body's volume of fluid is depleted. It can be enough to affect the body's ability to perfuse the tissues if it loses 20% or more of its fluid. This can occur due when there is dehydration due to severe vomiting or diarrhea, blockage in the intestine, pancreatitis, or severe internal or external bleeding. When a substantial amount of fluid is lost from the body, blood pressure drops, thus reducing stroke volume. When the stroke volume diminishes, so does cardiac output, which drives blood pressure. This is because the blood does not provide enough oxygen to the cells. 2. Cardiogenic shock. Cardiogenic shock is pump failure caused most commonly by myocardial infarction or CHF. It is a condition where the heart is injured to the point where it cannot pump enough blood to meet the body's requirement for oxygen. It is also the physiologic endpoint of all other causes of shock. Therefore, regardless of its etiology, cardiogenic shock can be thought of as shock caused by heart failure. Fortunately, advances in medical care have made cardiogenic shock less prevalent, but it remains a life-threatening condition. Myocardial infarction is the most common cause of cardiogenic shock. The heart muscles do not contract well after a heart attack. As a result, the heart's contractions become weaker, resulting in a reduction in stroke volume. Ultimately, cardiac output and blood pressure also decline. As a result, the body fails to maintain a high enough blood pressure to oxygenate the tissues, resulting in shock. 3. Obstructive shock. Obstructive shock occurs when a physical obstruction in the heart or blood flow causes a decrease in cardiac output. Three conditions cause obstructive shock. Cardiac tamponade results from fluid buildup in the sac surrounding the heart. This fluid buildup is called a pericardial effusion. Often the pericardial sac also becomes inflamed. Some health issues that can cause this fluid buildup are infection of the pericardial sac such as during a viral or bacterial illness, cancer, inflammation of the pericardial sac from a heart attack, trauma from procedures done to the heart, autoimmune disease, reactions to certain medicines, radiation treatment to the chest area, metabolic causes, such as chronic kidney failure, with a buildup of fluid and toxins in the body, after open heart surgery. Sometimes acute cardiac tamponade can also lead to very low blood pressure. That can cause symptoms of shock. Tension pneumothorax occurs when air accumulates between the chest wall and the lung and increases pressure in the chest, reducing the amount of blood returned to the heart. In an ordinary pneumothorax, injury to a lung allows a certain amount of air to enter the space between the lung and the chest wall or pleural space. Typically, the air stops accumulating. However, in tension pneumothorax, air continues to enter the pleural space as the person breathes and pressure rises inside the chest. The rise in pressure reduces the amount of blood returning from the body to the heart because the blood cannot force its way into the chest and back to the heart. As a result, the heart has less blood to pump to the body, resulting in shock. These effects can occur rapidly, particularly in people using a mechanical ventilator. 
Tension pneumothorax can rapidly be fatal. A pulmonary embolism, P. E, is a blood clot that develops in a blood vessel in the body, often in the leg. It then travels to a lung artery, where it suddenly blocks blood flow and causes necrosis of the lung tissue. This greatly reduced the amount of surface area available for gas exchange. What are the symptoms of pulmonary embolism? Shortness of breath. Chest pain that may become worse when breathing in. Cough, which may contain blood. Leg pain or swelling. Pain in your back. Excessive sweating. Lightheadedness, dizziness, or passing out. Bluish lips or nails. Obstructive shock occurs when adequate oxygen and nutrient delivery to the organs and tissues of the body is compromised as a direct result of an obstruction to blood flow into or out of the heart. 4. Distributive shock. Distributive shock is caused by excessive vasodilation that reduces blood flow resistance. There is less resistance as the arteries dilate and blood travels too quickly to offload oxygen. Systemic vasodilation leads to decreased blood flow to the brain, heart, and kidneys, causing damage to vital organs. Perfusion and blood transport to the tissues are reduced as a result. Distributive shock occurs in three forms which are septic shock, anaphylactic shock, and neurogenic shock. Septic shock results from bacteria, or toxins, in the bloodstream. When large quantities of these bacteria begin circulating in the bloodstream, every organ and tissue in the body is at risk of damaging effects. The most dangerous consequences of these bacteria include poor functioning of the heart muscle, a drop in blood pressure, causing blood clots, widening the diameter of blood vessels, damage to the lungs causing acute respiratory distress syndrome, organ failure, and coma. Septic shock is the most common form of distributive shock and is characterized by considerable mortality, treated, around 30%, untreated, probably greater than 80%. Anaphylaxis is a severe, potentially life-threatening allergic reaction. It can occur within seconds or minutes of exposure to something you're allergic to, such as food or bee stings. Anaphylaxis causes the immune system to release a flood of histamine that can induce vasodilation, vascular permeability, causing edema in the interstitial space and bronchoconstriction, resulting in shock. Signs and symptoms include skin reactions, including hives and itching, and flushed or pale skin, low blood pressure, hypotension, constriction of the airways and a swollen tongue or throat, which can cause wheezing and trouble breathing, a weak and rapid pulse, nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea, dizziness or fainting, Neurogenic shock occurs due to a nervous system injury. It can lead to vasodilation in the periphery causing inadequate perfusion to the vital organs. Neurogenic shock is a disruption of the sympathetic nervous system that affects tone in the blood vessels. Without sympathetic tone, blood cannot efficiently circulate throughout the body, which results in a decreased heart rate, low blood pressure, and temperature dysregulation. Neurogenic shock describes the hemodynamic changes resulting from a sudden loss of autonomic tone due to spinal cord injury. It is commonly seen when the level of the injury is above T6. You don't experience blood loss, but the blood doesn't circulate correctly. The blood pools in your blood vessels, and your blood pressure drops significantly. On the other hand, spinal shock refers to loss of all sensation below the level of injury and is not circulatory in nature. Stages of shock Compensatory shock The early stages are driven by the sympathetic nervous system's fight-or-flight response which is stimulated by the activation of the amygdala, hypothalamus, pituitary glands, and adrenal glands. Epinephrine, or adrenaline, is released, causing vasoconstriction, an increase in heart rate, an increase in blood pressure, an increase in respiratory rate, an increased release of glucose to fuel the extra work, and prolonged stress causes a release of cortisol. As the stage advances, there is a failure of compensatory mechanisms, dilatation of arterioles, venules, and capillary beds. Because of this permeability, fluid leaks out of capillaries and collects in the interstitium, and there is sludging of blood. This reduces tissue perfusion leading to hypoxia. Initially, body tissue except brain and heart suffers from hypoxia. Decompensatory shock. This stage is marked by hypotension. Cellular injury and tissue injury is so severe that the condition does not revert to normal even after correcting hemodynamic defects. 
Hypoxic and ischemic cell injury causes leakage of lysosomal enzymes, which further aggravates the condition. Myocardial infarction and synthesis of nitric oxide further worsen the condition. Intestinal ischemia causes microbes from intestinal flora to enter the circulation, which produces superimposed bacteremic shock. Acute tubular necrosis occurs in the kidney. Irreversible shock. The body has been pulled so far from homeostasis and depleted all of the reserves of the body that it cannot return to a state of homeostasis. Significant multi-system organ failure ensues. This results in severe acidosis, hypothermia, DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulopathy. This triad is commonly seen in patients who have sustained severe traumatic injuries and results in a significant rise in the mortality rate. Signs and symptoms in different stages of shock Compensated stage 15 to 25 percent of fluid loss from vessels and there are subtle signs of shock mean arterial pressure will be less than 10 to 15 millimeters hg from the baseline increased renin and antidiuretic hormone secretion vasoconstriction increased heart rate decreased ph decompensated stage 25 to 35 percent of fluid loss from vessels and classical signs of shock appears Mean arterial pressure is less than 20 mm of mercury from baseline. Tissue hypoxia develops. Decreased urine output. Oliguria. Weak rapid pulse. Decreased pH. Irreversible stage. Greater than 35% of fluid loss from vessels. Body cells die to hypoxia. And vital signs come to the bottom. Anuria. Excessive organ or tissue damage. Multi-organ failure. Decreased pH death. The bottom line. The treatment of shock for EMTs and paramedics include diagnosing the patient's type and stage of shock, treating the underlying condition resulting in shock, stop the bleeding, administer epinephrine for an anaphylactic shock, administer antibiotics for septic shock, recognize and determine the underlying condition, and determine the appropriate definitive treatment. Treat the effects of shock by administering high-flow oxygen, keeping the patient warm and rapid transport to the hospital. Aggressive management of ABCs ensures that vital functions such as respiration, blood pressure, heart function remain at optimal levels. Rapid transport. For more information and other videos, check out our website at dieseltherapyacademy.com. Follow our blog and social media pages, and check out our student EMT, paramedic, and nursing exam prep apps available at the Apple Store and Google Play. If you found this video helpful, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and request additional topics you would find beneficial in the comments section below.